Let me greet all of you this morning in the name that is above every name. We greet you in the name of Jesus the Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. We thank him and we bless him because he has blessed us to be here on today. Amen. For the psalmist says that this is the day that the Lord has made. So let us rejoice and be glad in it. If you're glad to be here on this blessed Sunday, amen, let's give God some praise. Amen. Indeed. <coughs> Excuse me. The Lord is worthy of all of our praise. Come on and join me in a word of prayer here on this blessed day. God, how we thank you for being good. Thank you for being God and God all by yourself. We thank you, God, for again blessing us to gather in this sacred space on today both in person and virtually. We gather acknowledging that the only reason we are able to be here is because of your grace and your mercy. We thank you, God, that through your grace you have given us blessings that we don't deserve and through your mercy you have withheld some things from us that we do deserve so we thank you for your grace and we thank you for your mercy we thank you for allowing us again to be here on today God forgive us of those things that we have said or done that has not been pleasing nor acceptable in thine sight we pray now that you would purge it from us so that it will not hinder us from hearing from you and hinder us from giving you what you deserve, which is praise, honor, and glory. Again, for this is the day that you have made. So God, let us, your saints, rejoice and be glad in it. No matter what we may find ourselves going through, may we be reminded that we're not in it by ourselves so we can rejoice. Amen. And God, we know that if we made it through something, we've already made it. We only made it because you enabled us to make it. So we will rejoice. Amen. And then, God, there are some things that we don't know about that's on the horizon, but we will rejoice knowing that when we face it, we won't face it alone. So, God, we thank you for today. Today is a day of thanksgiving. God, we give you honor and we give you glory. You are so worthy of it all. So this is the day that you have made, that you have crafted, that you have given. So we will rejoice. And be glad in it. In Jesus' name, this day we pray, amen. Let's give God some more praise, amen. Well, again, to say that this is the day the Lord has made, this is the day that the Lord has crafted, the Lord has created, the Lord has manufactured, the Lord has blessed us with. So since this is the day that he has given unto us, let's bless his name. And in particular, in that particular Psalm, Psalm 118, it was referring to the day that God laid out that he would send us Jesus. Amen. The, 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 the stone, amen, that the builders rejected. Thank God for the day he sent Jesus. Amen. And because of that day, we, man, we still rejoice even in this day. So we give him honor and we give him glory. If you love the Lord, say amen. Amen. Again, we are blessed to be here. I want to first of all start off by saying thank you to the Reverend Dr. Samuel Peoples, amen, who stood in on last Sunday. Amen. He blessed us tremendously. Amen. I was with the Reverend Dr. Bishop Carter III, our very own uh, Dr. Carter. Amen. As he celebrated this month, he's celebrating his 40 years in pastor ministry to the Beth Seder Baptist Church family. Amen. And so... Uh, we lift up Dr. Carter. We had a wonderful banquet on yesterday, and he's finishing out those festivities here on the day. So, again, we send from, from, from his home church to Dr. Carter. We, again, extend you a uh, happy anniversary, amen, and blessings to you on reaching that ministerial milestone, amen. That's a blessing, amen, uh, to be able to provide pastoral leadership to one congregation for us uh, that length of time. So, again, congratulations, to Dr. Carter, and thank you to Dr. Peoples. Amen. Amen. We are now launching into the month of August. There are several activities I want to mention to you. First of all, be put on your, uh, uh, be mindful, amen, to be in prayer uh, for the family of Deacon Christopher Hunt. Amen. Uh, his funeral will be here on this coming Tuesday. Uh, the visitation is at 11 and the service is at 12. So let's be in prayer for his family even as they uh, journey on the highway. Give them safety of travel and we look forward to uh, his homegoing celebration 
on this coming Tuesday, amen, uh, August the 2nd, amen. And again, that will visitation is at 11, and the funeral will actually be at 12, amen. Also, this month of August, we're resuming our activities of the month. We had a break month in July, and so we're going to resume a portion of our activities, amen. We're going to resume, start with a prayer meeting, amen. Prayer meeting will resume via Zoom, amen. Uh, resume via Zoom, I like that, amen. Uh, this coming Wednesday at 6 p.m., all right? And so uh, you'll be able to check the website, our Facebook page, as well as uh, check your emails via Breeze, which is our church management software. Amen. You'll see, you'll be able to see the link that you'll be able to check in to get to, 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 to dial in for a prayer meeting. So we look forward to uh, seeing you this Wednesday at 6 p.m. for a prayer meeting. Amen. Amen. We will not resume Bible study here in the month of August. We got a couple of conflicts uh, on the calendar, things that are there. So we will resume Bible study in September. So stay tuned for our next Bible study series. We'll resume Bible study in September. Amen. And so with that in mind, also let me add that to your calendar for those who want to thank God. Give our music ministry a hand. Amen. They have been holding it down uh, through this pandemic period as we uh, continue to provide the ministry of music. We're going to ask amen for those who have been part of our ministry of music that have been working with our praise teams, etc. We're looking to see how can we uh, begin to reactivate it, our choir. Amen. We're ready to begin to do that. And so we're going to ask for those who are part of our praise, who's part of our music ministry. We want to ask, invite you to join us this coming Thursday at 6 p.m. All right. So please spread the word. I ask you to join us this coming Thursday at 6 p.m. as we uh, sit down and see where we're at and where how we can move forward uh, with our music ministry, the integration of our praise teams, and the reactivation of our choir. So we look forward to having that conversation again. Give our music ministry another hand today. Amen. All right. Amen. Then throw on your calendar. Amen. The second Sunday in August. That's our scholars. That's going to be our scholarship Sunday. So, know for our scholarship Sunday, we bring a special love offering for our uh, scholarship for those students who are uh, who are advancing uh, in the educational journey. We have, I think, two that we're already in, and one is I think one is on the way. So, we have three. Amen. But we want to encourage you, please, ma'am, please, sir, bring a little extra love offering on the second Sunday in August. Amen. That will be our scholarship Sunday, and we'll also have baptism on that Sunday. Amen. We're going to the water on the second Sunday in August. Amen. So we look forward uh, to that. Also, many of you, I've received several calls and communications and concerns for uh, those who have been impacted by the floodwaters in eastern Kentucky, wondering what are we going to do, and we're still coordinating some efforts. I serve as the east region moderator of our state, so I've been in contact with uh, several of the pastors in that area, and we're working and coordinating efforts. So with that being said, what we're going to do, I mean, I, on, on the third Sunday in August, that's August the 24th. That is going to be our Eastern Kentucky Disaster Relief Sunday. Amen. Uh, stay tuned for what we'll be doing. We'll be at least looking to uh, generate a love offering. Amen. For the relief effort. Uh, our moderator of our state, uh, Dr. Michael Rice, is keeping in our prayers as he's our newly elected moderator for the General Association of Baptists in Kentucky. Uh, he's working with me as part of the East Region um, uh, and the moderators team to coordinate an effort similar to what we did with the churches in Western Kentucky for the 20th NATO relief effort, all right? So we're coordinating that, so stay tuned, amen, but we'll give you the additional details um, before the third Sunday in August. So that's our Eastern Kentucky Disaster Relief Sunday, and so we'll at least be doing a love offering, and we'll let you know what else we'll be looking to do on that day for the Mario has a goal, a financial goal in mind that he wants to generate, and we're taking the approach uh, that, as we did with our tornado relief fund, um, we, we were taking a long-term approach, seeing what we can do to make sure we minister to needs. Uh, beyond just the initial days of the disaster. So uh, they have dispersed monies and are still dispersing monies to those impacted by the tornado in western Kentucky. And we're taking the same approach in our eastern region. All right. So again, August the 14th, Scholarship Sunday, August the 21st, Eastern Kentucky Disaster Relief Sunday, and then August the 28th, Worship Beyond the Walls. Amen. We'll be in Douglas Park on the 28th of August. To, amen. 10 a.m. and then our community cookout. So we're looking forward to, uh, to, to our Worship Beyond the Walls service. Amen. We do this on a regular and a pandemic kind of hit, but we're ready to uh, try to get some things back rolling. Amen. To some level sense of normalcy. So let's give God some 
and praise for worship beyond the walls. Amen. So spread the word. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll be in Douglas Park on Sunday, August the 28th. Amen. I believe that covers everything today. If you love the Lord, say amen. Amen. Come on now. Let us receive this praise team, these men, these mighty men as they come and lead us and worship here on today. Again, if you love the Lord, say amen. Amen. God bless you. Come and go with me to my father's house, to my father's house, to my father's house. Come and go with me to my father's house. There is joy, joy, joy. Come and go. Come and go with me to my father's house, to my father's house. To my father's house, come and go with me. To my father's house, there is joy, joy, joy. Peace, peace and love out there in my father's house. In my father's house, in my father's house, peace and love out there.
for you. Amen. And that where I am, you may be also. If it was not so, I wouldn't have told you. And so I, I'm glad that there is another shore. Amen. If you're glad about it, give God some praise today. Amen. And we are grateful uh, that after we have labored on this side, amen, there is a better day, amen, that awaits us. Uh, so when we transition from labor to reward, but since we're still here, let us continue to labor, amen, in expectation of what shall, uh, what shall come, amen. I think my the, the devotional lesson this morning for our daily bread says to keep on pressing, amen. Uh, press, press toward the mark of the upward call, the higher call in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. So as we press one day, we will press our way and make it to the other shore. Amen. Let's give these men a hand this morning. We thank God for these, our brethren here on today. We thank God again for our entire music ministry as a whole. Uh, as, we can, as they continue to week after week to lead us in worship for them, we are grateful. Let us also uh, give God some praise for our audio video ministry, amen, our hospitality ministry, amen, our deacons ministry, and our health ministry that continues uh, to labor week after week so that we may be able to worship safely and that we may be able to worship comfortably, amen, for it's good again to be able to assemble in person uh, and worship and with that being said still take care of yourself amen um, we're still in the midst of this um, the pandemic is still here amen so so be mindful of that and uh, do what you can to continue to be safe as you go to and fro amen here on this Sunday morning um, 
Lord has guided me to hopefully say a word to encourage our students. Amen. Um, because uh, August marks the return to school. Amen. If I'm not mistaken, Fayette County goes back on the 10th of August. Amen. And I think we have other college students who uh, have already um, made their journey uh, trek back to school, is preparing to go back to school. So we want to hopefully say a word today that will uh, encourage them. Amen. Uh, as they get ready to head back to school. Get your school supplies and all that good stuff. Amen. You need those things. Uh, but you also need to take the Lord with you. Amen. And so uh, be mindful of that as we hopefully encourage you today uh, from the word of God. Daniel chapter number one. Amen. Daniel chapter one. I want to read verses 17 through 21 in your hearing, um, but we will be using the entirety really of chapter one uh, for uh, the content of today's sermonic presentation. But we want to anchor it in, 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 in this summary. Uh, summation is in verses 17 through 21 that highlights the early years of, 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 of four young men uh, and how their early years impacted them as you'll see their story through the rest of the book of Daniel. Uh, we know them uh, as, as a.k.a. Daniel and the three Hebrew boys. Amen. Uh, but but then, then, so 17 through 21 acts as a summary uh, of their early years and how it set the stage uh, for their latter years. Amen. Uh, reading from the New King James Version of the Bible, if you have it and you're ready to go in your electronic device or wherever you are reading the word of God and you're ready, say amen. amen. Daniel 1 17 through 21 says, as for these four young men, God gave them knowledge and skill in all literature and wisdom. And Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. Now at the end of the days when the king has said that they should be brought in the chief of the eunuchs, whose name was Aspinaz, brought them in before Nebuchadnezzar. Then the king interviewed them or questioned them, and among them all none was found like Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Therefore they served before the king. And in all matters of wisdom and understanding about which the king examined them, he found them ten times better than all the magicians and astrologers who were in his realm. Thus, Daniel continued until the first year of King Cyrus. Amen. How to use your today to get to your tomorrow. Amen. How to use today to get to your tomorrow. Amen. To my youth and young adults, uh, there was a saying that says, yesterday is a Cancel check. Uh, tomorrow is a promissory note. Today is the only cash you have, so spend it wisely. Amen. Uh, the, the idea behind the saying is, is that you can't do anything about yesterday. Tomorrow is filled with potential impossibilities. But it's predicated about, upon what you do with the day that God has blessed you with. What you do today will determine, amen, in part, what you will be able to achieve in your tomorrow. Uh, yesterday is gone. So let me suggest or say this, amen. There may be some students preparing to head back to school. And last year wasn't such a good year. You're not looking forward to a new year because you're still uh, 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 
bothered, amen, in some cases maybe even traumatized uh, from what transpired last year. But remember, yesterday is a canceled check. It's gone. Amen. Tomorrow still has great possibilities, but it is predicated upon what you do with your today. In spite of what happened last year, I declare this year can be a good year, so invest it wisely and get ready for the new school year. Might I also suggest that uh, what you learn today actually equips you for your tomorrow. Case in point is, is that when we look at Daniel's story, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, when we look at their life early years in Daniel chapter 1, what they did with their today in chapter 1 set the stage with what they did with their tomorrow in Daniel chapter 3 and Daniel chapter number 6. In Daniel chapter number 3, amen, uh, Hananiah, amen, Mishael and Azariah, also named as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, amen, uh, they had to deal with the fiery furnace of their tomorrow. But they were able to deal with the fiery furnace of their tomorrow because of what they learned about their today. Then in Daniel chapter number 6, Daniel had to deal with the lions in the lion's den. But as we look at the text and the story here with the today, Daniel was able to deal with his lion dens of tomorrow because of what he learned about his today. What you do with your today will set the stage for what you will do with your tomorrow. So here on this particular Sunday morning, I want to look at the early years of these four men whose story is captured for Israel and for us today to serve as examples, amen. And I believe from their exemplomatic behavior and what we see of them in our text this morning, we can see how to use today to get to your tomorrow. The first thing we learn about Daniel and uh, Hananiah, uh, Mishael, and Azariah, also named as Belteshazzar, given the name by Daniel, amen, and, 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 and Meshach and Abednego, amen. These, these, these four compadres, these four partners together, amen. Uh, the text says that as for them, amen, God gave them knowledge and skill and all wisdom and literature. God blessed them with understanding and with uh, understanding of visions and dreams. Might I suggest the first thing they did with their today is that they, 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 they took advantage of their God-given opportunity. Amen. They took advantage of their God-given opportunity. When you pick up with their story, it begins in chapter 1, verse 1, verse number 2, where it says that Nebuchadnezzar invaded Jerusalem in the third year of King Jehoiakim of Judah. And when he invaded Jerusalem, amen, uh, the verse number 2 says that the Lord gave Jehoiakim into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar. And in giving Jehoiakim into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar took idols from the temple back to Jerusalem, but he also took away some assets. The assets that he took away was among the brightest of the youth there in Jerusalem. For he issued a decree, and the decree was this. Look out and find the brightest and the, and the fairest among the royalty and the descendants there of Judah, and bring them to Babylon that we may educate them with a Babylonian education. We want to educate them in the, in the, in the school system of Babylon because we want to equip them for service before the king of Babylon. Amen. That's what he wanted to do. That's what his desire was. Amen. Now again, remember now, verse number two says that God gave Jehoiakim 
into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, and Nebuchadnezzar took these youth into his kingdom so that he might teach them Babylonian literature, science, mathematics. He wanted to teach them so he could use them. And verse number 17 said that God gave, them knowledge and wisdom and understanding, amen. So there's something about God giving Jehoiakim into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar and then God giving them the ability to learn. What was that? God was giving them an opportunity, amen. He was giving them an opportunity in their today which would set the stage for their tomorrow. The opportunity that he was giving them is that he was giving them an educational opportunity. He was giving them access to a good education. I want to suggest to you today, amen, uh, that if you're able to darken the halls of any classroom, that is a blessing from God. God provides opportunities for us to help us to prepare for the things that God has for us down the road. God, God gave them, amen, access to a good education. Now I need to pause right here to encourage us as parents and concerned community persons that while uh, these uh, uh, Hebrew sons were given the opportunity to have access to a good education, there's a flaw in the text. And the flaw in the text is, is that Nebuchadnezzar only wanted the brightest, amen, and the best from the upper echelon of Judean society. He was only concerned about educating those who were at a certain economic and socio-political bracket. Might I suggest to us today that it ought to bother us if our school systems are only concerned about educating the best and the brightest, but a true school system will give access not to some, but will give access to all. And when it's not giving access to all, then we ought to be concerned and we ought to step forward and say, it's just not good enough to educate those on one side of town, but we want to educate all the kids no matter where they are in town. Amen. Praise the Lord. It's just not good enough that some of our children get access to the best. We ought to be concerned so that everybody has access to a good education. But here in the narrative again, young people, amen, uh, God gave them access to this good education. Now, what I like about this text is, again, verse 17 is that God gave them. But in reading it and understanding this is that God gave them the ability to perform in the classroom. He gave them the mind to be able to sit and to learn. Amen. That's how he gave it to them. He increased them in their ability because they were able to sit down and listen and learn from their classroom instructors. Might I suggest that the main reason you are in school is not to entertain, amen, is not to, 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 to your main reason is to be in the classroom and learn your lessons. They were only able to do or to grow in what God gave them because they were able to sit and glean from their instructors that were in front of them. God gave it to them as, as through their teachers and their instructors. Amen. Praise the Lord. Take advantage of the opportunity. Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, they did not squander their God-given opportunity. God gave them access to an education. And, and then God used that education to be the source of their elevation. When you continue to read, notice from verses 17 to 18, 18 says that, 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 that Nebuchadnezzar said, had, had, a, had an educational program. 
uh, they were to train for three years. At the end of the three years, uh, he would bring all of Daniel and his comrades. They would come before the king and they would be examined. And based upon their, 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 their performance before the king, based upon how the king rated them and ranked them, would determine, amen, where they would serve in the kingdom of Babylon. Know very carefully, amen, that, 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 that it was more than just Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah that arrived in Babylon. Uh, it was more than just Daniel, amen, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah who sat in the classrooms of learning. It was more than just Daniel, Hananiah, Azariah, amen, and, 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 and Mishael, amen, that, 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 were, that were afforded the opportunity of the education. But the text says that it was Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah who stuck out as standout students. Why? Because I believe, amen, because they put forth their best effort, they were able to glean, and when they, when, they, when they gleaned, God allowed them to shine. In other words, when you put forth your best effort, God will put you in places that can't nobody else put you in. Because of the mere fact that they put forth their effort, God blessed them and used their education to be the source of their elevation. So much so. That Nebuchadnezzar said, I continue to examine them and they continue to develop. And I discovered at a young and old, they were 10 times better than the folk in my own kingdom. God will bless you, elevate you if you put forth the effort. Have I got a witness? Their education became the source of their elevation. And they elevated beyond their peers. Let me just pause right here and, 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 and suggest you can't do everything your peers do. <laughs> uh, matter of fact, can I just, can I just illustrate it? Uh, uh, the, 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 the first point is, is, that, is, is that they were able to take their today and use it to get to their tomorrow because they, first of all, took advantage of their God-given opportunity. God gave them the opportunity to have access to an education. Secondly, amen, what we learn from them is, is that they were able to use their today to get to their tomorrow because they did not compromise their spiritual integrity. Amen. They, 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 they took advantage of their God-given opportunity, but neither did they compromise their spiritual integrity. Uh, it, it's wrapped up in the story because uh, part of their educational training, uh, King W. said, said, I want them to be able to perform at peak value. I want to be able to perform in the classroom. Now, performing in the classroom means that for your mind to be sharp, your body has to have the right substance. Uh, it, it, it's hard to learn on an empty stomach. Have I got a witness? <laughs> and so I, 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 for their minds to function uh, at, at peak performance level, I want to make sure they are getting the right nutrition. So therefore, the king ordered that they should eat from the same royal menu that he ate from. Whatever was put on his table, he wanted to put on their table. Whatever meat he ate, he wanted them to eat. Whatever fine wine he drank, he wanted them to drink as well. Whatever he had access to, he wanted to make sure they had access to it too. But the text says in verse number 8 that Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the king's royal menu. My Bible reads delicacies. Amen. Uh, 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 he, he, was, he was concerned about 
their spiritual integrity. Amen. Notice Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah were the only four brothers who decided that they would not eat from the king's table. All the other peers, amen, ate what the king provided them. In other words, Daniel says, I don't care what y'all do. There is some stuff I just can't do. I cannot contaminate myself. I cannot corrupt myself with stuff off the king's table. See, Daniel understood that as a Hebrew, as an Israelite, God had dietary laws. They believed that attached to their relationship with God was the proper upkeep of their bodies. So therefore, God provided them dietary laws to make sure only certain things went into their bodies because when some stuff would mess up their bodies, so therefore, they attempted to make sure they kept their temple, their body, pure before God. The idea was, amen, is that I do not want to render myself incapable of getting in touch with God. Uh, 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 do the homework, you'll discover, amen, uh, that dietary laws, amen, help them to remain not only physically fit, but ceremonially fit. It's what allowed them to be able to enter into the temple, holler at the priest, get prayers up to God, and get prayers from God. The idea is that their dietary standards help them to remain or maintain their connection with God. Now watch this again. They're in Babylon. No access to the temple, Brother Lindsay. So if there's no access to the temple, why should I then be concerned with maintaining the purity of my body, which is the temple of God? Since I'm now separated from the place where I would go to get connected with God, and God has messed allowed me to be in this place, why should I care about my body at this particular time? But I believe Daniel recognized something. I might not be able to get to the temple, but I know the God of the temple. And the same God that met me at the temple will be the same God that will meet me here in Babylon. So I don't want to put nothing in me that's going to corrupt me or contaminate me that's going to mess up my connection with my God. I'm just trying to tell you, young people, there's some things you just can't do. There's some stuff you can't consume. There's some stuff you can't let get in your mind, in your body, because it might mess with your relationship with God. And one thing you need in this world more than anything else, you need your relationship with your God. Amen. There's a whole lot of stuff in Babylon. (laughs) Babylon Babylon has it going on. Have I got a witness? Some of us been to Babylon. That's why many of us shout, thank you, Jesus, now. Because we got over in Babylon and... (laughs) Lord have mercy, had more than just king meeting. Death. We had some come everything, amen. But God protected us. And what we want to share with you is try to avoid some of the pitfalls that some of us had to go through. Amen. So Daniel, Daniel, Daniel and the boys decided that they would not compromise their spiritual integrity. And watch this. And when you decide, when you make up your mind, God will reward your spiritual integrity. Dedication. Because text says, amen, you keep on reading from verse number eight, is that God gave Daniel favor with the chief official. Aspinaz gave him, Aspinaz had, had command over all the Judean boys that were taken from uh, Jerusalem. He had command over them. But, 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 but God, the text says, God gave Daniel favor. Have I got a witness? 
where, where, with the chief official and why he was hesitant to go along with Daniel's plan. Daniel was like, look here, I don't want to defile myself. I don't want to, because I need my connection with my God. I, I'm, 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 I'm a proud Israelite, and there's some stuff I just can't eat. It's, it, it, it'll mess with me. I, I, can't, I, can't, I, I, can't, I can't consume that. So, so this is what I wanted to do. Amen. I know you're afraid of the king. And so then he appealed to another servant that was over him, and they said, this is what we're going to do. Let us eat vegetables vegetables and water for 10 days amen and then compare us to everybody else that's eating from the royal menu amen and because of the favor that God gave to Daniel Hananiah Mishael and Azariah they were allowed to engage in this testing period. And at the end of the 10 days, it turned out that they were fairer, brighter, looked better, and performed better than their colleagues. Now, that wouldn't have happened unless God gave them favor with Aspinaz and another servant. What I'm trying to tell you is, is that when you dedicate yourself to God, God remain dedicated to you. He'll give you favor with folk that can help you get to where you need to get to. Have I got a witness? And I, I, I can stand here. I don't have time to, 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 to run it off, but I thank God for the favor that God gave me with some professors that allowed me to get some extended deadlines on some stuff that other folks didn't get. i just be honest with you this morning. Amen. One of the reasons why I was able to get my degree is, amen, I had to have a private conversation with a, with, with a professor and say, look here, this is what done, this is what done happened. And I, if you could grant me some favor, but what I discovered, it wasn't the fact that that the professor granted me favor. God granted me favor with the professor. That's because I was kind in class. Yes, sir. No, sir. <laughs> how you relate with people also will help pave the way with how God will allow people to relate to you. Have I got a witness? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. God rewarded their spiritual dedication because they did not want to compromise their spiritual integrity. Remember, my young folk, you are a child of the king. You, 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 you are a royal heir to the God up above. And yes, you might make some mistakes here and there, but don't waddle in your mistakes. Go ahead, ask the Lord to forgive you, get on back up and keep it moving. Whatever you do, don't forget you are a child of God. Do whatever you can not to compromise your spiritual integrity because God will reward your spiritual dedication. But here you go, parents. Their spiritual dedication was built on a foundation. Can I come back to the parents, grandparents, aunties, uncles, concerned citizens one more time? Uh, 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 the, I answered that. I said, Lord, Daniel and them boys are teenagers. I think I, I should have told you that. They were be about 16 to 17 years old. When you do the, do you do the, the, the numbers, amen, the, the number of years, because the text says in verse number 21 that Daniel served to the year of King Cyrus. We take the year of Babylon captivity. They went into captivity under Nebuchadnezzar. And then on the captivity, Nebuchadnezzar, he served to King Cyrus. Cyrus is the one who issued the decree to let the captives go back home, which means that that's at least 70 years. So Daniel couldn't have been a zero when he arrived in Babylon. <laughs> Amen. Uh, but for him to be educated at the point of where he was means that he was probably in his teenage years. Amen, somebody. Uh, so, so teenagers, you, 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 you can do the thing now. Amen. I, the Lord will bless you to be able to do some awesome things even in your teenage and young adult years. Amen. But here it is. I had the question. I said, this young brother and, and his comrades have been relocated from uh, their home to a foreign land. They get there and all their other colleagues amen, was doing what was uh, handed down for them to do from the king of Babylon. But they decided, text says, I love it, eight, 
Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself. Which means there was something in him, amen, that caused him to take the stand that he took. And might I suggest stuff just do, that doesn't just get in us. Somehow, some way, somebody has got to deposit something in us. Uh, I contend, amen, my brothers and sisters, that the reason why they had such dedication is that somebody laid a solid foundation. Somebody took the time from the time they were born to the time they were cut it off to instill with them some values that they were unwilling to compromise. Amen. I praise the Lord. Amen. Yes, there are some things that I did. Amen. Growing up in high school, college, etc. But there were some things I did not do. Have I got a witness? There are some things I didn't do because of what was put in me. There was a line I knew not to cross. And the only reason I knew it is because somebody, a grandmother, a grandfather, an aunt, an uncle, a Sunday school teacher, a mama, and a father put some stuff down in me. In other words, they laid a foundation. Parents, 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 grandparents, amen, aunties, uncles, and concerned citizens. One of the best things we can give our children is a solid foundation anchored in God. They need to know that if you build your life on a sure foundation, who is Jesus Christ, that when the waves come, you'll be able to withstand challenging times. I'll show it to you in a minute. But they had, they had a foundation. Thank God for foundations amen so whatever you do whatever you give whatever we give our children let's make sure we give them a solid spiritual foundation talk to them about jesus make sure that they're, 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 they're reading more than just checking facebook tweets and texts make sure they check the book amen and see what god has to say about how they should navigate their lives the the, the book is still a good foundation have I got a witness? Yeah, 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 yeah. They, 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 they had dedication because I believe they had a good foundation. They realized that there was some stuff I just can't do. There's some stuff I just can't eat. That means that somebody had to teach them what they could and couldn't do, what they should and shouldn't do. We live in the age of, of, of helping our children to be critical thinkers, and that's good. That's reason. That's that's nothing in some of the language of verse number seventeen. Amen. Uh, but, but reason and be critical thinkers. Amen. Uh, but, 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 but there's some stuff you don't need to reason about. Reasoning about God, there's no reasoning. God is God. 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 God is God. Amen. Investigate, study, amen, so you can grow. But there's some things you don't have to have a shot of a doubt about. You don't have to doubt the reality of God. You don't have to doubt the fact that God will stick with you if you stick with God. And God is so good that the reality is that even when you don't stick as close as you should, he'll still stick close to you. There are some things. You don't have to reason about it. Amen. And that is God. I got to get out of here. I don't held you long enough. Amen. But remember I told you that when you build them, you give them a good foundation, uh, it'll help them to weather some things. Because the text lets us know that they not only did they take advantage of a God-given opportunity, uh, not only did they not compromise their spiritual integrity, but young people, they learn how to handle adversity. I wish I could tell you that your educational journey would be all good days. There'll be some challenging days. There'll be some exams you'll fail. There'll be some relationships that'll let you down. Amen. You're going to have some challenging times. Uh, 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 trouble doesn't just knock on your door when you get to be 30 and 40. Trouble knocks on your door at 10. Amen. The, 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 the devil starts... Working on you at 12. <laughs> Have I got a witness? Uh, 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 challenges doesn't just start coming your way when you get to be an adult. You will face some stuff in your youth and young adult years. 
Might I tell you, amen, can I, can I tell you that, that, that while the text says that at the end of the days they appeared before Nebuchadnezzar and all was well, but something happened before they got to the end of days. But it says in Nebuchadnezzar's first year, he invaded Babylon, amen. He invaded Jerusalem and carted them off, amen. But at the end of three years, they appeared before the king and everything was okay. But chapter 2 says something happened in Nebuchadnezzar's second year. Which means that before they got to the point of being elevated, amen, as a result of being elevated, something happened in the kingdom with Nebuchadnezzar. The chapter number 2 says he had some dreams in chapter number 2. He had some dreams <laughs> that the Bible said troubled him. He had some dreams. He had some visions. And, 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 and to make sure that, 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 that the folk that was going to interpret his vision would give him the right interpretation, he, this is what he said. He said, I need you to do two things. I got a dream that's bothering me, and I need you to, number one, tell me what the dream was, and then tell me the interpretation of the dream. And, and, and if you can tell me what the dream was, then you can tell me the interpretation of the dream. And if you do that, I'll reward you. i give you great riches. Amen. But if not, i got to kill you. <laughs> i, I, I got to take you out. Uh, I'm sorry. I have no need for you. If you cannot do what I need you to do, you, you, you're in my inner cabinet. You, you, you're, you're, my, you're my wise men. You, 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 you're my soothsayers. I need you to tell me what's because this thing is bothering me. I hate going to sleep at night because every time I go to sleep, this dream creeps up on me. Where it went out, and they said, wait a minute now. The king is asking something impossible. No king in history has ever asked his wise men, tell us your dream and then interpret the dream for the king. Never heard of. Every other situation, the king says, this is my dream. <laughs> Would you tell me the interpretation of my dream? The text says, the king says, no, because if I did that, you would just keep uh, prophesying stuff until things change. I can't go there. I, I need to know what the dream was and the interpretation of the dream. Well, caught up in this mix was Daniel Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. So when they find them, Daniel says to the chief of the king, hey, look, uh, 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 let me have a word with the king. Amen. Daniel went into the king and said, king, I just need a little bit of time. I know it's our day to die uh, because uh, we're part of the, the wise men team. I, I, we get that. But, but king, get, get, I, just, I, I just need a little bit of time. King said, all right, give you some time. Daniel went to Hananiah, <laughs> Meshach, and Azariah. He said, look here, this is what we're going to do. Uh, there's only one somebody we know that can interpret dreams because he gives dreams. And so if he gave the dream, let's pray that the God of mercy, the God of dreams, will give us the revelation of the dream and give us the interpretation of the revelation. And guess what God did? <laughs> guess what God did? Guess what God did? God heard four praying teenagers. Don't lose that. God heard four praying teenagers. Not God heard four preachers praying, not God heard four deacons praying, not God heard four Sunday school teachers praying, but no, God heard four teenagers praying, and God answered their prayer. Young people, all I want to tell you is that God will hear and answer your prayers. That's how they learn to escape adversity. Now, remember, what you do with your today sets the stage for your tomorrow. So when we get to Daniel chapter number three, and the king says, if you don't bow down and worship this God, you're going to go into the fire furnace. Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, we've already been there, king. <laughs> and God delivered us before. So we believe that he is able to deliver us now. When Daniel had his line in his episode, remember I tell you, we'll do it show today. 
So the Savior of the Mark, when they got to the Mark, chapter number six, uh, Daniel, you got to stop praying. If you don't, lion's den. Daniel didn't stop praying. Why? Because he'd already been there. <laughs> he'd already learned that lesson. That when all else fails, you can call on the name of the Lord and he will answer your prayer. That's enough. I think I got my points across. Amen. That's how you use your today to get to your tomorrow. Seize God-given opportunities. And one of the greatest opportunities God gives you is the opportunity of having access to an education. While you're getting it, don't compromise your spiritual integrity. You are a child of God and maintain your commitment to God and God will continue to show up and maintain his commitment to you. And in the midst of these times, when you face adversity, don't check out, don't fall apart. Call on the name of the Lord. The Lord will see you through. That's how you use your today to get to your tomorrow. God bless you. The invitation to Christian disciples is being extended because there is somebody else who taught us about prayer. In the text, we had these young men. They were four com com comrades, colleagues, tight partners. Amen. Uh, find, find some tight partners you can, you can hook up with, be tight with. Amen. Y'all can go through things together. Jesus had that. Your Lord and my Savior on his way to Calvary's cross. That night at Gethsemane, he called on his boys. He said, look here, I got some adverse winds ahead of me, and I need some prayer warriors. They prayed with him for a minute, but eventually they fell asleep. Jesus found himself all alone. There may be some times you might find yourself all alone too, but yet even in those times, Jesus' prayer was answered by the Father. As he prayed in Gethsemane, the Father strengthened him for the journey ahead. Jesus, by getting the prayer answered and getting the strength that he needed, went on up to a hill called Calvary where he gave his life that your sins and my sins might be forgiven. Young, old, amen. He died that we might have life and have life more abundantly. Whether you're in, the, in, in, in person or virtual, amen. Jesus gave his life for you. So we invite you to give your life to him. Give your life to him who can give you the strength to endure and give you the ability to be blessed. Give your life to Jesus for he came that you might have life and have life more abundantly. We welcome you to come today as a candidate for baptism. Or maybe you have accepted Christ and you're looking for a place to grow as, with a church home. We welcome and invite you to come with us as we strive to be the church in the community for the hearts of the community. Is there one? If you're, in, if you're virtual, 859-252-7191 or hit us up our Facebook page or our website. Is there one? Maybe you can set the stage for your today for tomorrow by accepting Christ today. Not because I've been so faithful. Is there one? Not because I've been so good. Today. You've always been there for me. Is the day of salvation. To provide my every need. Is there one? You were there when I was lonely. You were there in all my pain. Guide in my footsteps, shelter from the rain. And it was you, you make my life complete. You are to me my everything, and that is why I sing. I love you because you care. I couldn't imagine. Is there one? If you weren't there. You're the joy of my 
salvation. You're the peace in my storm. Your loving arms protect me. They shelter me from harm. You are Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. Yeah. My strong tower, my dearest and best friend. And it was you, Lord, you make my life. Jesus because the Bible said because he first loved us. Amen. If you love him, give him some more praise today. Amen. We pray that you've been blessed by today's worship experience. Again, God bless you to all of our students, to all of all of our all of our students. Amen. To God be the glory. We ask if Sister Mason Kiosha, once we end service today, come, 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 come up, come up front. Amen. And, and Holly, she's asked for special prayer today. Amen. So we'll lift her in prayer. Uh, join me. Ask if a couple of the deacons will also join me up front as well. If you don't mind, join me up front. We're gonna lift her in prayer on today. Miss Kiosha Mason, her mo mother, I think this says had a had a stroke. So we're gonna uh, lift lift her lift her in our prayers. Amen. Um, to God be the glory. Let's give God a, a, some praise for our students as well. Amen. Good to see. I think the, these these lights they are good, but I, I don't see y'all as clear as I used to. That that, that 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 might preach. Amen. It used to be dark up here, and I can see everybody clearly. And then now we got lights. Y'all see me clearly, and I can't see you as clearly. Amen. But praise. I think there's Sister Madison out there today. God bless you, dear heart. Amen. Pray for one of our college students. So to God be um, the glory. So again, God bless you here on today. Amen. We, we're gonna we're gonna provide our benediction. Then we're gonna ask Sister Mason make our way up here, and we're gonna pray with her. Amen. Just me and a few of the deacons. Amen. So to God uh, be the glory. Come on. If you love the Lord, say amen. amen. 
Amen, 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 amen. To God be the glory, amen. Come on, let us, let us close and receive the benediction on today. God, how we thank you for blessing us with our children and our youth. They are a blessing from you. So God, we lift them to you as they prepare to enter into another school year. May they take advantage of their today. Because as they take advantage of their today, it sets the stage, builds a bridge to their tomorrow. So God, we pray that you would keep them in thine care. Bless them in the classroom and beyond. Wrap them with your safety and protection. God, we pray, Lord, that you will bless them as they go and as they come. Again, God, even when they face adversity, remind them that the same God that answers mama's and daddy's prayer is the same God that will answer their prayer. Be a real presence to them. That is our plea and our prayer. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ rest from the Bible with all of us henceforth now and forever. Let all of God's children say amen, amen, amen. amen. and amen. We love you, we love you, and God loves you too. Let everyone say amen. 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 God bless you today. Amen.